Please help me to welcome a very special, warm Jamaican welcome to someone who has, is as gifted on the track as she is as beautiful and graceful off the track. But after all, she is Jamaican. <laughs> Chairman of RJR Sports Foundation, members of the board of RJR Communications Group, Mr. Gary Allen, Managing Director of RJR Communications Group, other distinguished guests, nominees, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Before I start, I'd like to take a moment to congratulate all the nominees this evening. You are all so deserving of this incredible honor, and no matter who wins tonight, remember you're all winners. I have to quickly add that I was, as I was watching the performances tonight, I kind of feel embarrassed. I was more, I guess, relatable to Freddie McGregor than his son Chino, so I guess I've been gone too long. I was thinking Freddie's words and not Chino, but they're both absolutely fantastic. Thank you for the entertainment this evening. I would have never thought when I was seven, eight, and nine years old, intensely competing at Vast Preparatory School, that years later, one of my heroes in track and field, Miss Grace Jackson, would ask me to give the main address at such an auspicious occasion. To be quite frank, I'm sure I could learn so much more from many of you in the room this evening, but at a young age, I've been extremely blessed to have so many incredible experiences that I'll humbly accept the opportunity to share my story with all of you. Firstly, as all of you know, and that was mentioned by Chris, I was born here in Kingston, Jamaica, and started running when I was seven years old. I remember practicing every day with my coaches, Mr. Casey Graham and June Simpson, and I remember the passion and knowledge they had for track and field. They instilled in me at a very young age, along with my parents, there was only one way to be successful, that was through hard work and discipline. That was the thread at Vash Preparatory School, whether it was on the track or in the classroom, we were held to very high standards. It was something that never left me. When I moved to the States, I was one of the hardest working students in middle school. For six months consecutively, I won academic uh, student of the month. And of course, I continued my winning ways on the track. By the time I was 16, I was faced with an amazing opportunity. I was approached by a woman and asked to join the US team and compete at the World Juniors. I was so excited as I believed it was the next step for me and I desired to continue developing the friendships that I had already started making. It wasn't until she sent all the paperwork that I realized there was one small problem. At the time, the decision seemed easy. I wanted to be on the team with all my friends, and this lady saw my talent and wanted to help me develop it. In retrospect, it was one of the toughest decisions of my career. The way things have turned out, I definitely think it was the right decision for me. Life is full of choices. Sometimes we have to make the tough decisions, even if it doesn't make everyone happy. In sports, I've had my shares of ups and downs, including my highs of 2006 and 2009, and my low points of 2007 and 2008. However, the most difficult time of my career thus far was when I was diagnosed with Bichette's disease in 2007. It was hard not knowing if this illness was life-threatening, if it would inhibit me from competing, or if it would just continue to get worse and worse. It was an obstacle I never saw coming. Thank Fortunately, because of my faith, my family, and the phenomenal people that have touched my life in a very positive way and taught me to never give up, I had a season like I did in 2009. The three main concepts I wanted to share with you this evening are hard work and discipline, making the right choices, and overcoming obstacles. As I look around the room and I see the likes of Courtney Walsh, my peers, Usain Bolt and Asafa, Bridgette, Karan, Veronica, and hiding back there, Shelly Ann Fraser, 
I'm also so thankful to see the amazing Sunshine Girls, and I'm so proud of all that you guys have done this season. As I see all these amazing athletes, I know I don't have to belabor the importance of hard work and discipline. We know there are no shortcuts to success. As we've seen over and over in our sport, those shortcuts are short-lived. A lot of times when we have dreams and aspirations, sometimes we feel as though things aren't happening quickly enough. And sometimes we're tempted to get to our goals by any means necessary. One of the things I can say without reservation or doubt is that there is no greater feeling than achieving your goals and knowing you did it the right way. Being able to look yourself in the mirror and be proud of what you were able to accomplish. I'm reminded of my motto at Vaz Preparatory School, honest labor bears a lovely face. Yeah. <laughs> then on to choices. I told you earlier about a choice that was difficult. Now I want to tell you about a choice I made that was easy. I've always known the moment I had enough resources that I want to start a program that would help young children here in Jamaica. I've always bragged highly about our educational programs and was astonished to hear about the rapid increase of illiteracy in our country. I partnered with an organization called Fund for Kids and we installed a program in Kingston High School to improve literacy in young kids through sports. It has been three years and the program is now installed in five high schools and we recently received received a grant for $100,000 U.S. dollars to continue our mission to improve literacy here in Jamaica. I talk about choices, but the truth is, giving back shouldn't be a choice. It's truly our responsibility. Whenever you're in a position to help someone who otherwise may never have gotten that opportunity, you should give with a joyful heart. As we've seen so many times, one person can affect change. Why shouldn't that one person be you? Finally, I want to briefly discuss overcoming obstacles. No matter how perfectly we plan or how well we prepare, life always has a way of throwing us curveballs. I want to encourage all of you this evening, no matter how many times you've tried or how many times you've heard no, if a dream is planted deep in your heart, never give up. Continue to work at it as if you've already won or you've already heard yes. Your dreams start in your heart and in your mind, and through hard work and discipline, making the right choices and determination, it will come to fruition. In closing, I've traveled the world, and the sentiment towards Jamaica and its people is one of admiration and love. Thanks to the likes of Usain Bolt and Shelly Ann Frazier, who've only continued the traditions of the great Donald Quarry, Grace Jackson, Merlin, Auntie Juliet Cuthbert, who's here this evening, and so many others, we have been very well appreciated for our unique talents and deep desires. Now I challenge you all to become much more than just the fastest people on the planet. I challenge you to continue to be a beacon that shines brightly from the Caribbean Sea. Be leaders in good works, role models to the next generation. We are a people of great grit and amazing prowess. Let's continue to marvel the world and show them what greatness can come from such a small place. Good evening. Thank you.